Daisy, 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 Daisy. Mark Jacobs. At Macy's, the fragrance destination. How white do you think your teeth really are? Let's try the tissue test. Oof. Still yellow. There's toothpaste white and there's Crest 3D White Strips white. White Strips safely work below the enamel surface for whiter teeth in three days, guaranteed. A zillion times whiter. Crest. Jack Conrad is the biggest film actor. It's happening now. A former San Antonio police officer accused of shooting a 17-year-old in a McDonald's parking lot has been indicted by a grand jury. Coming up, we'll hear remarks and an update from the district attorney. At least 20% of CPS Energy customers are behind on their bills. We'll tell you why so many people are behind and how to keep the lights on. A damp and drizzly pattern is setting in. I'll be back to talk about how long it's going to last because it will lead to some reduced visibilities on the roadways and our temperatures will be up and down a bit. The very latest in just a bit. The News at 5 starts right now. The news broke at noontime today, but now hours later, details on the new formal charges against a former SAPD officer are out. The Bear County District Attorney announcing the results of a grand jury indicting James Brennan for his role in the shooting of Eric Cantouf. The teenager was shot multiple times by Officer Brennan while eating a burger in his car at a Northside McDonald's. Our John Paul Barajas at the press conference that just wrapped up. John Paul, there have been some additions to the charges, I understand? That's correct. The DA announced those right here in front of the Paul Elizondo Tower. Originally, Brendan had uh, two counts of aggravated assault by a public servant, which are both first degree felonies. Now they've also added an attempted murder charge, what many people have been calling for. But it is important to note that that attempted murder charge is actually a lesser charge at a felony, too. Now, as for a breakdown of the charges, the first aggravated assault charge and the attempted murder charge are for Eric Cantu. Cantu was hit multiple times in the shooting at a McDonald's parking lot back on October 2nd. He spent weeks on life support and suffered injuries to his stomach, diaphragm, lungs, liver, bicep, and forearm. He was just released from the hospital last week. The second aggravated assault charge is for Cantu's passenger at the time, a teenage girl who was not injured in the shooting. The DA saying this at today's press conference. Justice means prosecuting that individual for this conduct. Justice means obtaining a conviction. Justice means making sure that man never works as a member of law enforcement, making sure that that man never has a gun and a badge. Justice means seeking appropriate punishment. As for Cantu's attorney, they sent us a statement that reads in part, Today's announcement is a relief for Eric, his family, and everyone supporting them through this tragedy. Adding this is a significant step forward towards justice, but there is still a long road ahead. Now, the next steps in this case is to go set a court date to figure out if this is going to go to trial or if a deal will be made. They think that will happen in the next several weeks. John Paul Barajas, KSAT 12 News. Thank you, John Paul. Also new at five, the city suing the county, the city of Uvalde, tired of waiting for answers, now filing a lawsuit against the Uvalde district attorney to have files pertaining to the Robb Elementary School shooting finally released. That lawsuit filed today. City leaders say D.A. Christina Mitchell Busby has consistently blocked efforts to obtain critical information that would allow its independent investigator to actually look at some of that and evaluate the actions of law enforcement officers at the scene. According to mandated policies and expectations, that lawsuit requesting that a judge order Mitchell Busby to turn over pertinent documents to the independent investigator only under a confidentiality and non-disclosure agreement. We will, of course, stay on top of the story and let you know what develops next. A councilman once again. In a unanimous vote this afternoon, the San Antonio City Council appointed Mike Gallagher to serve as the temporary replacement for Clayton Perry in District 10. It comes after Perry admitted he was responsible in a hit and run crash and then chose to take a leave of absence from his council seat. City Hall reporter Gary Berger with why the new face on the council as his replacement is a very familiar one. The San Antonio City Council started its meeting with an empty chair, but by the end had invited a familiar face to join them. Welcome back, Mike. Congratulations. Mike Gallagher was the D10 councilman immediately before Clayton Perry, representing the Northside District from 2014 to 2017. 
His experience seemed to give him the edge over the other two candidates City Council interviewed. I wanted to know which candidate seemed to be most familiar with the work, the current work of the council office, um, or who could come up to speed, you know, the fastest. The retired Air Force officer is now the head of the Northern Hills HOA and the Northeast Neighborhood Alliance. His top three priorities, he says, are supporting police and fire, infrastructure, and better support for code enforcement though he's not looking to shake things up in the D-10 office. We make sure everything runs smoothly from the District 10 office, that we, all of the programs and projects that we have underway, that they continue to go. Gallagher says he spoke with Perry on Tuesday, and they did absolutely continue to lean on him for help. I think it's very, very important that if we're going to have continuity, we have to hear from what uh, Councilman Perry has to say on these issues, and I will take them into consideration. Perry started his leave of absence on November 14th after being charged with failure to stop and give information in a November 6th crash. Perry has not resigned, and Gallagher's appointment only lasts until Perry returns or his term ends in June. Mike Gallagher making it clear, though, that he only plans to fill this seat for a few months at most. He said he does not plan to run in the May 2023 election. At City Council, I'm Garrett Berger, KSAT 12 News. I want to make a quick correction right now. We previously reported that police have already filed a DWI charge against Clayton Perry. However, we have learned that is incorrect, at least at this time. The police chief has confirmed they are putting a case together, but a spokesperson for the DA's office today said they have not yet received that case. We apologize for the air. It didn't take long for more women to come forward after the arrest of a Bernie gymnastics coach and camp counselor on sex charges. Today, two more female athletes, both in Houston, allege that Michael Spiller sexually abused them too. Their attorney, Michelle Simpson Teagle, says that they are pursuing legal action. She's best known for representing former Team USA gymnasts in a case against Dr. Larry Nasser, and as well as some other high-profile cases. She did not say when the alleged abuse, abuse took place, nor what the paperwork has been filed in this case. Now, this week, Spiller was arrested and charged in Kendall County on two counts of indecency with a child. They involved two separate incidents, one that occurred allegedly on a school bus ride, another involving a victim who was attending a summer camp at the Bernie Gymnastics Center. The glow of a massive fire gave commuters along I-10 an eyeful this morning. Take a look. The San Antonio Fire Department says this fire in the kitchen at the Denny's next to the Flying J truck stop on Foster Road it did a lot of destruction. As you can see, that fire broke out about 5 a.m. Multiple fire crews on the scene trying to put out the flames before they could reach fuel lines at the gas station. Firefighters were also trying to save dozens of big rigs parked in the area. No one was hurt. Firefighters say all those workers and customers got out safely. If you're having trouble paying off your electric bill, you are not alone. Right now, CPS Energy says more than 200,000 customers are overdue, and what's owed overall is six times what CPS is used to seeing. Yeah, KSAT's Camelia Juarez has the shocking numbers, but also how to keep your lights on if you're behind. They divided it to 72 uh, payments because I'm $1,000 overdue. Behind on her electric bill, this CPS customer says because she is paying for surgery and car repairs. She's not alone. Jeanette Coates just paid off her overdue balance through a payment plan. You know, is it going to get cut off? And they're like, no, just always pay. CPS Energy says nearly 20% of customers have overdue bills. The average outstanding bill is $900. Deanna Hardwick with CPS says many customers were not paying because of the 2020 moratorium during COVID and the winter storm surcharge. We saw with high gas prices and the extreme heat, many people did experience really high bills this year. And there are folks out there that haven't paid uh, their bills in over six months. In February of 2020, CPS reported 36 million in outstanding bills. That number has now risen to 207 million. Coates encourages other customers with outstanding bills to get on a payment plan. They work with you. I mean, it was no hassle. You know, the people are pleasant. 
um, no notices, you know, those pink cards or whatever. CPS Energy has resumed disconnections unless the customer is on a payment plan. You can set that up by calling the number on your screen or going to ksat.com. CPS staff will see if you qualify for assistance and they can help you create a payment plan. Camelia Juarez, KSAT 12 News. All right, let's go from past due bills to some better news for all of us. Gas prices dropping across the nation. For us here in San Antonio, as of today, the average gas price $2.69. That's according to GasBuddy.com. Down 10 cents this week and a big 44 cents in the past month. Taking a look outside with your traffic authority cameras. You know the roads are wet out there. You can see the reflection of the headlights. It's just a little drizzly and misty, just enough to make everybody need to drive a little bit carefuler. A nuisance. A nuisance. nuisance. Rain. That's the key. Nuisance moisture out there right now. Looking at the live radar, it's really not detecting anything. One sprinkle heading northward into Comal County, but that's basically just heavier drizzle. So this is that nuisance moisture that doesn't add up to much, but it reduces the visibility significantly and makes it difficult to figure out what setting you need your windshield wipers because it's never really consistent. Just a personal frustration. 48 degrees right now, dew point of 47. Those numbers are very close, so the air is basically saturated. In turn, we've got the drizzle visibility down to five miles right now. Other temperatures, 47 Leon Springs, 56 Del Rio, 51 in Lakey, Floresville at 54 degrees, Myco at 50, and temperatures are not going to change much the rest of this evening. Holding upper 40s right near 50, more drizzle. We're going to talk about the extended pattern when the humidity returns and a Saturday cold front coming right up. Thank you, Adam. Still ahead. Yep, it's December 1st. The countdown is on to Christmas, but now could be the perfect time to take advantage of some rock bottom deals. They're still out there. We are listing some of the most sought after products that are being marked down. I'm Myra Arthur, and here's what we're working on for you for the news at 6 o'clock today. New details about a fire that killed two women early this morning. RJ Marquez spoke to emotional neighbors who said that one of the victims was a person who always helped those in need. What we know now about how this tragedy happened. Plus, one day he's questioning a witness. The next day, he's gone. A dramatic turn of events in the trial of a former Border Patrol supervisor accused in a string of murders. Why an attorney for the prosecution says he quit. And today was the deadline for organizers at the Cowboy Breakfast to get their funding for next year's event. But they are still scrambling to find a sponsor and the money to make it happen. We'll tell you what's in store for the future of this local tradition if it's canceled and who would be affected. And it's not just thousands of people looking for breakfast tacos. Those stories and a lot more today on the News at 6. Thank you, Myra. Black Friday and Cyber Monday with all those super duper discounts. Well, they've come and gone, but don't worry. There's still plenty of deals out there. Yeah, 12 on your sides, Marilyn Moore. It's rounded up some and has your holiday help. It's the most wonderful time of the year for sales. If you didn't get everything you wanted or needed this Black Friday or Cyber Monday, don't worry. A lot of those super low prices are still available and there will be plenty of holiday deals that are nearly as good all month long. Consumer Reports tracked 35 products that typically hit their rock bottom price in December. So they say now is the best time to buy certain highly rated products that happen to be popular presents, like these high-end Sony earbuds. They're wireless and noise canceling. They're now $228 on Amazon. That's $80 off. Next, a gift that will perk up the coffee lover, this Cuisinart Coffee Center brews by the pot, or it uses coffee pods for a single cup. It's $60 off at Bed Bath & Beyond. But when I looked, it was sold out. So I did some shopping around for you and found it here on walmart.com for the same price, less than $140. Here's a wow gift idea, a new tablet. This Apple iPad Pro is $800 at Best Buy. It's the 2021 model. It's $300 off, a massive discount for an iPad. 
If you want to go practical, this stick vac by Tenneco is down to $350 on Amazon. It's cordless and cleaned up on the vacuum test. And finally, if you're using an early smart speaker, now's a good time to upgrade. The Amazon Echo fourth generation is slashed to about 60 bucks at Best Buy and Amazon. Testers say the sound quality is so much better, perfect for those holiday tunes. Marilyn Moritz, KZET 12 News. Well, it's that time again. The streets of downtown will be echoing with the sounds of hundreds of feet running in the annual Rock and Roll Marathon. May hear some music as well as you're out there. This weekend, San Antonio, the place to be if you're a runner on Saturday, the 5 and 10K races on Sunday, the marathon itself. Now, just a heads up, different streets will be closed off. If you need more details, we got you covered right now on KSAT.com. And with the up and down weather, it's, it's hard to know what's next. Right now, it's just bothersome, misty, something or other here and there. I, I'm guessing runners this weekend are hoping for low humidity. <sighs> okay, and, and that's on Saturday, correct? Saturday, correct. Sunday's the marathon. No, Sunday's Saturday's the, marathon. the 5 and 10K. Okay, so we have some changes coming our way throughout the weekend, and they're going to take place on Sunday. And there will be a little brief drop in the humidity, I think, just in time for the marathon, but very briefly. Bottom line, we have a lot of fog and drizzle in our future here. I mean, many days in a row. Damp, but just a few sprinkles, probably not much in terms of appreciable rain. Then a cold front hits on Saturday. So Saturday is going to be an upside down day. Warmer in the morning, becoming cooler as we get into the afternoon, changing throughout the day. Take a look at our rain chances. And of course, we're still searching for some much needed rainfall. You see that 30% Friday, Saturday, that's really just for a few sprinkles. We will have dampness and moisture in the form of drizzle and fog and a few hundredths of an inch here and there, but just a few sprinkles and that's it. Here's the issue right now. Visibility is down to four to five miles locally, even less in Bernie down to two miles, but you get outside of San Antonio, visibility is still okay because the difference between the temperature and the dew point is a little bigger. There's a little bit more of a gap, but locally they're close. Air is saturated. Looking at the temperatures, 48, San Antonio, 49 measured at Stinson Airport, 52 Seguin, 50 in Rio Medina. But notice how these numbers, especially around Bear County, being 48, 49, very close to the dew point. Dew point in Converse, 48. Dew point at the airport, officially 47. When the temperature meets the dew point, the air is saturated and, well, it can lead to the fog and even drizzle in this case and the overall dampness, but not good rainfall. Here's our visible satellite imagery and those clouds came in very quickly earlier this morning. Remember, we we're expecting those clouds to increase and boy, it happened fast. And now that we're saturating, we don't just have the great gray sky, but also the dampness to go with it. And I do think that dampness will spread outside of San Antonio through this evening and tonight. Here's our future cast and notice going through time, it just holds tight, keeps us socked in overnight, midnight, a few little sprinkles popping up on the radar screen, very light in nature. Remember, we're talking not much accumulation here. If you're lucky, you could squeeze out up to a tenth of an inch. Tomorrow for the morning commute, reduce visibility, fog, drizzle, dampness, and maybe a stray sprinkle, but a, that would especially be east of San Antonio. Now tomorrow afternoon, I do think this cloud deck and the fog will erode a little bit from the outsides in. And there could be some peaks of sun here and there, even in town, but don't anticipate to see much sunshine, not just tomorrow, but for many days ahead until we get into next week. Really not much for sun. As for real active weather, what we have is just nuisance weather. But the real active weather, big dip in the upper level flow, big trough, western U.S., northwestern U.S. That's some good moisture there and some good lift. And then the system exiting New England still has some lift with it. We just don't have any of that troughy weather moving our way because upper level high, big blue H, it's over the Gulf of Mexico and it's going to creep westward and just float around parts of Mexico, the Gulf of Mexico, basically all of next week, and it's going to give us some very stable conditions. So here's your forecast. Here's the breakdown. The rest of this evening, no changes. Drizzle, upper 40s. I think we could even warm a degree or two by the morning. 51 at 7 a.m., damp and drizzly. By about 3, 4 p.m., a few peaks of sunshine tomorrow. Well, that would boost us into the 60s. 67, the high temperature tomorrow afternoon. And then right after sunset, that drizzle kicks back in for Friday evening. So Friday evening, Activities, outdoor events, anticipate 
drizzle and dampness to develop. Our temperature trend, it's up and down a bit the next few days. Upper 60s tomorrow, but by Saturday afternoon, we're down in the upper 50s, and then next week is going to be much more stable temperature-wise. We have some stability headed our way in the upper 70s, but that fog and drizzle pretty much daily through the weekend and into next week. Hey, the newest drought monitor is in a comparison at 6 o'clock. All right, Adam, thank you so much. All right, when you're up 20 points, you, think you're you gonna expect win. to win. Yeah. Yeah, sure. And you can tell these losses that are piling up are starting yeah. to get to these young fellows because you can just hear it in their voice. And the only way out of this is to win. The losing streak extended to nine after what happened last night in OKC and the Roadrunners' final ticket push for the big game tomorrow. Coming up. Our San Antonio Spurs had the chance to end their longest win streak of the season last night when they faced the Thunder in Oklahoma City with a great first half, even without Jakob Pertl, Josh Richardson, Jeremy Sohan all out for the night. In the first quarter, Malik Branham finds a cutting Doug McDermott along the baseline for the throwdown. Spurs lead by three going into the second. That's where the Spurs exploded. Romeo Langford gives the Spurs an 18-point lead with his three. Following that was Keldon Johnson's trade, and the Spurs lead grows to 20. That's when the wheels come off. After scoring 41 points in the second, the Spurs can only manage 19 in the third. Remember that 20-point lead gone when Trey Mann ties the game at 98. Now down five with three minutes to go. Kata Bates-Diop goes to the rim for the basket and the foul. The three-point play gets the Spurs within two, and that's as close as they could get, dropping their ninth game in a row, 119 to 111. After being up by 20, did this loss hit a little harder than most? Yes, of course. Obviously, this is a tough loss. Like... We expected to come out here and win this game, and we did win this game. So it's a tough loss. We'll watch film, and we'll try and learn from it. All right, trying again. This will be against the Pelicans tomorrow at 7 p.m. to see if they can break out of this losing streak. After jetting home late last night with his teammates from Oklahoma City, Spurs point guard Trey Jones was able to make it out to Methodist Children's Hospital with the Coyote and YouTube streamer Cypher PK to spread some holiday cheer in conjunction with the Spurs Give. They were there to donate a portable gaming console as part of Outreach Cart to provide an outlet for the children or undergoing treatment. Just making sure that, you know, they're happy. Um, you know, obviously... You know, they don't deserve to be in, you know, the position that they're in. Just to be able to try to bring any joy um, into their days while they're here um, just means the most to me. You know, Trey is an avid gamer himself and decided to sit down and try out that console and stuff today with the children. With kickoff now just a little over 24 hours away, the UTSA Roadrunners begin their final push to try and get more than 50,000 fans in the stands to tomorrow's Conference USA Championship game against their rivals North Texas in the Alamo Dome. Last night, Associate Athletic Director for Communications Kyle Stevens confirmed that some upper-level sections have been open to ticket sales to help meet that goal. And star quarterback Frank Harris has asked what it would mean to him and his teammates if that many fans would show up. Uh, it means a lot for us uh, to come out there with a lot of people, a lot of fans. I mean, it, re it really happens. You get two two back-to-back -back championships, so um, we'll just help everybody that comes out there, support you know the San Antonio team. Um, we definitely appreciate it, feed off the energy. Just hope to see everybody out there. All right, and coming up tonight on the night, we will run down some fan info for you to help you enjoy tomorrow's game, including when you can start tailgating. Yeah, and how to get there without being in traffic and all that. <laughs> well, there's going to be traffic. Just night, get, the, right? get there early. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> Thanks, Greg. We'll be right back. Get used to drizzle, fog, and overall dampness as it's going to be greeting us at some point pretty much every day the rest of the week and all the way into next week as well. So about the next seven days and a few sprinkles mixed in. 68 tomorrow. Saturday will cool off in the afternoon down into the upper 50s. So changing throughout the day then. Thank you, Adam, and thank you for watching the News at 5. World News is next. See you at 6.